Richard. Our, our next speaker is um, Lily uh, Edo Lodge. Uh, she's a writer and a uh, freelance journalist, uh, editor of the uh, Feminist Times, and um, contributing editor to Common Black Times. I can't remember who it was wrong. Black Times are the biggest problem. My uh, information is incorrect. Uh, Thanks, um, thanks Mark for reminding me. So I'm actually a contributing editor at this Times, but I am a freelance journalist and I write prim primarily about race, race and gender. But today I wanted to talk publicly about something that I haven't spoken publicly about before, which is youth unemployment. Um, because I still have a young person's rail card and I have a couple of years until I have to give it up. So I really wanted to talk about an issue that's sort of fallen off the agenda, you know, nationally, although it's, you know, bubbling under the surface um, and there are a number of contributing factors that add to it like zero hour contracts etc etc um, but often when we talk about um, you know generation rent or you know the plight of the young um, there isn't actually very much of a lens that's applied to it um, that looks at the sort of um, intersecting injustices that creates a situation um, where young people are unemployed so I'm of the opinion that class and race and gender and poverty, it's, it's useful, I think, to focus on a single strand of one of the con contributing factors that makes um, the situation, um, but they're all completely interconnected. I'm going to focus on race today, but there's a lot of analysis that can be made um, in, all sorts of, in all sorts of different sort of uh, circumstances, whether that be gender, you know, gender pay cap, etc., etc. But I'm going to tell you a bit about my personal story, and I think I can because I'm in a much better position now, even though, you know, freelance has the ups and downs. So I realised today that I graduated three years ago, and, I, and after graduating, I had a very difficult time. And I remember very clearly, as a child, being told by my mum that um, if I wanted to get on in life, I would have to work twice as hard as my white counterparts. And this was something that I never really understood before and, until I graduated. And having had conversations with my white friends about that exact sentence, they, would, they told me, well, we weren't taught that at all. We were taught that you, would, that you wouldn't see race, right? That you were, you were taught to be colorblind. And um, just on my way here, on the train here, sorry about being late, by the way, I saw a really interesting quote on Twitter that I'm going to read out. And it said, um, one day you wake up and you realize that you can be exceptional as you possibly want to be, but race still matters. So um, I graduated with a 2-1, you know, not first, not from a particularly fantastic university, but I did well where I was. I went on to be student union president. Lots of people said, oh, you were very promising. I worked at the university a lot. They told me that, you know, I was an exceptional student, etc., etc. et cetera. Um, and when I left, it was unbelievable. And I'm sure lots and lots of young, young people who, you know, recently graduated can, you know, sort of claim testament to this as well. It was almost sort of like this merry-go-round of um, constant, pointless job applications that led absolutely nowhere. And you would spend, you know, days and days and days on these applications and you would be so confused and, and confounded. And it didn't really matter how, how good you were. When, we, when I saw all of these stats about youth unemployment, often they're reported um, as though young people are a homogenous group, but I've got a couple of stats with you. The latest came out um, at the beginning of this year. Actually, it's young black people, young black and minority ethnic people who are, who, they're actually twice as likely to be unemployed than their white counterparts. And so if you think about the 16 to 24 bracket, um, uh, the unemployment rate for 16 to 24 is currently is, um, for young white people is about 19%. You're looking at 46% for Pakistani and Bangladeshi workers, and 45% for young black people. So clearly, this is a crisis that's actually disproportionately um, affecting some people on the lines of race. And I actually think it's incredibly important to unpack these things, because if you just trot it out as just being youth unemployment, actually, it's very difficult to um, identify the discriminations that are going on inside that. Oh, my gosh. So employment discrimination is a particularly interesting one. Once I finally managed to get a job, um, I found that if you actually have an African or Asian sounding name, you will have to send many, many more applications um, than your white counterpart in order just to get an interview. And I think there, there's, there's, 
the people who are in charge, you know, these aren't card-carrying BMP members, you know, these aren't people joining the EDL, but there's clearly some latent racism going on there, right? And, and I think actually in, in hard financial times, we need scapegoats. And I think you said something particularly interesting about um, the divisive rhetoric around immigrants, but actually it's, it's affecting all black and brown people, and don't get me wrong, it wasn't, it wasn't like it wasn't always there, but it's certainly got worse. I think I'll end it there. Okay, we spot on time.